Welcome to the Money Collective Podcast. We're here to uplift your financial wellbeing. Your hosts are me, Mel Pierce, and Darlene Yu. We are the co-founders of the Money Collective, and together we have over 50 years of finance and banking experience. We provide the tools, information, and guidance to better understand your money and feel confident making money decisions. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Yeah, well, thank you. We are super (laughs) excited again to do another podcast. Yeah, we love it. We love getting on here and, uh, you know, just talking to each other about um, the stuff that we talk about every day. So it's really feeling good to get it out there um, to a broader audience. And I'm really hoping it's connecting with you as well. Yeah, Yeah. we do. (laughs) So um, lots of things to talk about today. And um, some things have gone down for me, actually. Mm. So uh, my partner, Purse, Mm. he um got some not so great health news this week mm. and uh he needs to have a hip replacement mm, it's huge right it is uh and he, my daughter's laughing because she's like ah, that's like an old, old person's person thing <laughs> and i'm like well he's old he's 49 he's, he's how old not he is. old i'm 52 yeah okay. that's right anyway it's a little bit sad um yeah so it's a little bit so there's a lot of emotions i think running through Mm. our home this week Mm. um is it a bit of a reality check of you know your um age or you know we take things for granted that things are always going to be all right yeah yeah well that totally is true because the thing i wanted to share about this situation is the cost and the fact that Mm. we don't have hospital cover Mm. in our insurance Mm. and that has um it stressed me out I think it's funny because like I don't know if I stressed out more about the money or the health problems Mm. I think it was both like they came on I was actually very aware of how much the money meant to me like Mm. um not that I was Mm -hmm. I really wanted to solve the problem too it actually made me realize how much i care about him as well yeah. like i'm like this is no good we have to solve for this straight away oh. like i don't um because talking to his gp um she had said uh that the public system the wait time to get that surgery is three to six years on average how crazy is that yeah anyway. and so he might be able to push through for the majority of the year it's obviously mm. been something that's been there for a while mm. um and causing mm. him problem mm. um yeah but we i cancelled our private health insurance hospital cover in 2018 mm. it turns out i mm. went back and had a check mm. and uh, at the time I made that decision, it's really interesting because I made the decision, mm. like you said, because I'm thinking, mm, mm, maybe if I just, I, do you know what I thought? I'll what put the money think? aside. I was going to say that as, as one of the thoughts. Why well, give it to the insurance talking. company? Yeah, yeah. I could put the money aside. I never did that, did yeah. I? I did not set yeah. that up. That, that is an idea for people though. You know, like if you really don't know, especially, I do, especially think in those younger years, like if you're in your 20s, 30s, um, you know, you think if you put that monthly insurance premium away for hospital all that time, then you'd have it in your later years. Yeah. Um, oh, I would love to hear from someone that's done that. Yep. <laughs> I'm making Darlene hide, yeah. hide her hands I under bang the table. and I'm making all the Sorry. <laughs> No more banging. I'm putting them under Yeah, but like who do who do who does that? Who puts this money away for later years? Yeah. Not me, apparently. But apparently, I'm sure there are good people who would do this. Yeah, you know, I definitely think it would be a great strategy. Um, but yes, who has done that? I'd love to hear from someone. Yeah, so <sighs> the where that's left us is, so the cost of the surgery is $20,000 out of pocket. So we could do that. Mm. But as you know, I'm trying to get on this holiday over to Canada. Mm-hmm. So there's all these things going in my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm like, right, holiday's cancelled. Let's just do the surgery. But And then his mind, in, he's saying, oh, no, 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 I can wait the 12 months. So what we did on day one is actually sign up again for health insurance. Mm. Um, the premium is about $400 a month just for him. I just covered him. Um, mm. And then the wait period, yeah, is 12 months to if we do that surgery. And then I thought if it gets unbearable, we could, you know, just do it, you know, um, yeah. think of you know, just yep. do it. Um, and then the other thing that 
money wise is that he is self-employed and he works on his own so there's nobody else in his business other than him mm. and if he eight weeks of recovery is forty thousand dollars worth of lost income and then the cost of the surgery so it's sixty thousand dollars huge yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um for some reason which i can't remember the details he doesn't have income protection insurance either mm. so uh, mm. It was something to do with him being self-employed and the wages that he paid himself mm. or something. Um, so I have health, uh, some sort of income protection, uh, but it's left us in this tricky situation. But I totally thought that maybe we were invincible or that mm. we'd be in a situation. I think it's just at other times might have been easier too, but like we've got you know these interest rate rises the cost of living yeah, it's compounding and all at once like coming in this everything. wedding and then yeah. Uh, yeah and i hold that responsibility i think how am i going to solve all these problems mm. i don't think he thinks mm. that way like i think he's not as worried about it as i am and i think it was just the hardest those first few days and now it's yeah mm. going into those troubleshooting things but i wanted to share that with everybody because mm. i i've been talking about my journey and how, and mm. if you've been listening along about my money personality and you know mm. the um the efforts that we've been going through to save you know mm-hmm. as well so it's funny that because the reality is that you get setbacks you know the reality is the you reality do. we is. talk about them and then experiencing it yourself and, and ourselves is how it actually feels and what it means to people um yeah, and I think it does bring out, like Mel always um, says innately, she's a saver um, personality. But I don't know, I oh, saw this week. A spender saver. Uh, I said, a, uh, yeah, um, a spender, sorry, I meant yep. to say. But um, I have definitely saw this week saver and the protection of that emergency money and that money, you know, yes. like... I'm yeah, gonna... I don't want to lose it. You no. know, I, I need to still have it there <laughs> and yes. deal with this, you know. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. I think my fear yeah. was like... Mm. using it all like yes. all the money's gone and then there's no backup mm. that and starting again yeah like, you gotta I do should, like i suppose in my brain i felt like i should be onwards and upwards at this mm. stage like and not having to yeah mm. worry yeah but it's mm. interesting i suppose that's exactly what it's there for isn't it to, mm. mm-hmm. yeah it is um, um part of that but yeah tricky times and You know, and sometimes they don't come in ones, like you said. Sometimes you'll get a few setbacks all together and it feels like everything's on top. So, um, yeah. Um, But the best tip out of all that is understand your numbers, um, what can and can't happen. Um, Do some projection. If I do all those things, how much money I've got left. And then, like you said, troubleshoot, problem solve. What am I prepared to prioritise over what? Um, Yeah, and, you know. It will land, I'm sure, and um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's hard to get a setback. It is, yeah. yeah. But I suppose life isn't smooth sailing mm. anyway. Which brings you to my my truth, which is sort of related. Um, my I have income protection insurance, and um, with all these things, obviously Mel's story, um, and I've got someone else around us at the moment that's um, had some unexpected surgery come up, and. It's a reminder that things do happen, but I, I'm conflicted because I get renewal of insurance near my birthday, my birthday soon, and it's a lot of money. I pay an annual premium, um, and I've had this policy for, oh my gosh, uh, maybe 20 years, and the thing is with the policy, it's got a fixed payout, so... Um, it doesn't matter what my income is anymore because I took it, um, a certain type of policy out that doesn't exist anymore apparently that um, you nope. know that will pay me a set amount till I was till I'm 70 if something happens to me so every year I always go through this do I pay it do I not I've never used it it's so much money I've sunk um, and then if I give it away it's gone um, but then you know it, it and you've got to find the money as well, you know. So it's a really tricky one, insurances. And then, you know, you know, it's, it's actually funny. Well, not funny. Interesting, you know, those things bigger than us that are happening around us, maybe trying to tell us messages. So um, having insurance um, might feel a waste 
which is how I feel sometimes because I have never had to use it. And I hope I never how do. I felt because I cancelled our hospital insurance. That's right. Card. But on the flip side, and I don't have the answer, by the way, but on the flip side, you know, what if? I'd be feeling if I had insurance and, and I'm Percy right now and I've had to have a hip operation, I'd be feeling, you know, really sad that I've got to have the hip operation and what that means, you know, to my invincibility. Mm. But besides that you know, financially, I'd be okay. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know the answer. It's a really tricky one. Um, what I um, have been advised, though, I've been working with a financial planner, um, hey, AL, give you a shout out, um, that um, trying to do a compromise. So at the moment, if I did have something, it would pay me out to the age of 70. Um, we're investigating paying me out to the age of 60. Because at 60, um, we can access superannuation. Um, and um, mm. then we've got different money to be able to call on. Um, so really it is about that financial resilience and planning scenario, the what ifs, how much will we need and so under then, what circumstances. if you're going to do that for the next eight years then, then you've got to work out, you know, like plan that. Instead of it yeah. being, oh, am I going to do it every year, like almost go, hey, am I going to commit to it and then make that part of the plan? So Definitely. then it doesn't feel like it's like... Every year I'm going through this. Yeah, yeah. because, yeah. yeah, like is it something you actually want? Are you prepared to do it? Do the costing, mm. think about that bigger picture mm. and then it's just done. Every year, like you know... Make sure I'm you're budgeting, allowing it. for That's it. That's right. Rather than... Because, because in my budgeting, I don't allow for it. You need to think about that really, yeah. you know, like your full, full financial position, like where all your assets are sitting and whether you're prepared to use whatever because it's basically taking away from investing or saving or some sort of asset that yes. you've got to that's right to have the insurance so are you willing to do that what does it look like over eight years mm. and then am i cool with that that's the plan go with it that is super because it's going to help you with how you feel in your body <laughs> yes. instead of resenting it and being pissed off once a year yep. about paying it that is such great advice. Because the other thing too that I didn't take into consideration when I cancelled that um, hospital cover, because I've had fantastic public health experiences um, personally mm. and I've had to have surgeries and things and I've had awesome care every time, including the birth of my children. And I thought, no, the public system is awesome, but what I didn't consider is wait times because I don't think yeah. that you get inferior yeah. um, surgeons. I don't think you get inferior no. health care. It's just these wait times, which I, did, I didn't even mm. consider that as when I cancelled it. Whereas, you just thought you'd be able to go in when you needed. Because we're now in a position where we have to wait, wait 12 months or if we didn't take out the insurance three to six mm. years, like that is untenable. Or like I could have been, he could have been having the surgery being booked in and basically getting this sorted out now. Mm. so it's interesting the things and this is all about education isn't it so mm. it's like when we feel like something hurts and this came up for one of our clients during the week as well insurance like she's like thought that she had a bad deal raw deal on the insurance but mm. then we talked about all of her health values and how much she uses it and she'd actually had a hip replacement herself mm. and thought well maybe i might need the other one done so the value was really high and when we looked at the premium it was awesome like yeah. it was she was like and she and then that let go that resentment for that line item that she's mm. paying for mm -hmm. So it's about education, understanding your values, what you want. Yeah, definitely. Because you, I would say you've got a really high health value as well. Yeah, very. Yeah. So you'd want it, things to get sorted. I would. I wouldn't want it to hang around. I'd want it to get sorted really fast. Otherwise, you know, it'd wear me down. And then yeah. it's the balance between all of these insurance policies. Because like when mm -hmm. one comes in, you know, then you mm -hmm. need the, the others, you know. So Potentially, you need them all to be I fully know, covered. I know. And or that's what we have. run the risk or and be where I am and you're going to have to do some problem solving to get yeah. out of it. But I think what you said is absolutely key. It's doing that planning out. That You know, it comes back to what we talk about, building that financial resilience, those play out those what-if scenarios and do them for health issues. You know, like if that happens, what would I do? What would I call upon? How long could I survive? How much do I need to set aside for those things? Yeah. Where can I get comfortable with that? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. 
Awesome. All oh, right. That's it. That was heavy. <laughs> that was heavy. We've had we've had a heavy week. So yeah. you know, you know, heavy things. But they are life things and the life throws us stuff. So we need I to build think our the resilience. other thing I've been super aware of this week is how much everything is linked back to money. So if we're participating in this capitalist system that we have, going to work every day and buying things mm. and you know, using the services that are available. Mm-hmm then almost all decisions are based around money. Like it's so hard to not link anything back Mm. unless you're deciding not to participate in this at all. But it's very hard not to, right? Because that's the society we live in. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's right. It's very hard to be not in it at all. Mm. Yeah. Anywho. um, Yes. Well, the topic of today is we want to talk about the difference between interdependence and codependence. Mm -hmm. Um, and you might say what that is. So to start with, I've brought up um, a definition um, and then on on the internet. And just to get us started in thinking. What does Dr. Google say? Well, Dr. Google says, the key difference between codependency and interdependency is that codependency involves dependence on another to the point where it is negatively impacting their life. Interdependence involves sharing roles but not being so dependent on another person that you lose yourself. Mm. Mm, That's a pretty good definition. It is pretty good. And we get, this is a pretty significant um, issue that we see in relationships. Yeah, and and related to money. Um, Yeah, so um, interdependence um, is what we would advocate for. Striving to say. Yeah. um, Where you you can still have some independence, you understand your situation and you're able to have some some level of autonomy, but you're making co decisions and there's compromises within a relationship. Mm. But Mm -hmm. yeah, and that opposite to that, where you're dependent on someone is where you don't have that. You're dependent on them. Can I, can we cannot you know, so we we're That's kind right. of giving yourself away and somebody's holding all the power. Somebody's holding the power in the mm. relationship and somebody doesn't. Mm-hmm. And we do see this play out um, with clients that we've served over the years in many different ways. Um, and a few examples, I guess, let's talk about that. Um, the, one of the hardest ones is relationship breakdown. If um, you've got a codependent relationship with money, it might mean um, that you're not the money earner. You might have stayed home, been the caregiver of your children, not kept up um, skills like career skills, um, and maybe not even making the money decisions or know how it works. Yeah, and can I rewind, rewind a little bit? Yeah. Like so in that scenario where somebody's in the relationship, mm. so when that relationship's in operation, mm. that person How's it feel? isn't mm. feeling good probably. Well, they mm. might not, they might be completely mm. unaware and that the status quo, they might just be okay with it. But the fact mm. that they might just be drip-fed money, mm-hmm. not being able to decide where to go, what to do, what mm-hmm. to wear, mm-hmm. and how to live their life. That's right. Um, and subtly, these things um, can take, a, take effect in a relationship when somebody... The common thing is, and it's mainly women, but it doesn't have to be, it's when they decide to be the caregiver at home with the family and sometimes if you're not making you know earning the money in your household then you're letting go of being the decision maker and vice versa the person that is the money earner might be deciding that they've got more you know right to make the decisions because they're earning the money so the mm-hmm. easiest way sometimes in interdependence within a relationship is to become and like not let go of your income earning capacity. But there's ways to be a caregiver and not be in a codependent relationship. Definitely, it all comes down to communication and standing up for yourself and being able to definitely recognize think, what's happening. I agree. I, I think the the key initially the key thing is to be really mindful about it and understand it and have a really good open relationship and communication communication right from the outset or if yeah. not from now that you this conversation might bring awareness yeah bring awareness understand those roles in your household um if you've got a partner and how it is actually working um and whether or not 
you're codependent or you're interdependent. Because what happens if you're in my situation and then your partner's unable to work for whatever reason? What yeah. ability and what resilience do you have in that relationship if you need to step up, step it up, mm. basically, and start making the decisions? So that's mm. why it's good to not leave it to like this point in t- time when it's required too or too late. <laughs> that's yeah. right. It's good to have that balance in a relationship always. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is really an interesting one because then there's the practicalities of what you can do. So one of it's definitely being really mindful um, to be equal in your relationship and your money decisions at home, no matter who's doing what job, it shouldn't matter. Um, The second, and then practically the things you can do is definitely understand your money flow and how it goes, you know, where the bills go, where the money goes, making sure you've got an equal seat at the table with making money decisions for your lives. First thing, did I miss something? The first thing might (laughs) might be how do I access internet banking? Oh, my gosh. How do I see the accounts? So good, yep. The practicalities. Do I have access to all of the things? Yep. Yep. Um, And this plays into money personalities too because mm -hmm. somebody could be like, oh, no, you're bad at money. You can't Mm -hmm. manage it. So Mm -hmm. then you feel like that. Mm -hmm. And then I know know what I'm doing. It's like that spender-saver, risk-taker, avoider type of power play coming in to force. Yeah, as well. So it definitely is overlaid with personalities. Um, But also um, it, it can play out different ways. So definitely... You can be the person that's doing the bookkeeping, so to speak, and paying the bills, but you're still not making the money decisions. Totally. That can happen as well. Yeah. And you feel the responsibility of it all because you're doing that, but you're not really... Well, you see that a lot with tradies, don't yeah. we? Like, tra- like I'm just going to call this out <laughs> right now because it's like, oh, no, my... Like, we'll talk about this and they'll go, no, my wife does all the bookkeeping and it's like, they're just like... The bookkeeping bitch at home, yeah, really. Yeah, the bookkeeping bitch. Really. <laughs> it does happen. Oh, my God. It drives me insane. And then they're still, like, doing that risk-taking behavior and making all those big money decisions. Mm. And then it's, like, to, for that bookkeeping bitch to pick up the pieces, basically, mm. but then still not making the main money decisions. So that is a thing that I'd love to see change. And I mm. think that maybe we are seeing less of that. I don't know. We are evolving. We are evolving as a species. Yep. <laughs> and I know that we talk a lot about gender roles, um, but it, there's truth in that too. So we're here to call it out a little bit. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. it's not re- um, reserved for... Mm. Um, we we love Exactly. And, and to me, it, it happens subtly over time. I don't think it's... Um, intentional I don't, mostly no. um, by most people. I mean, definitely there is money abuse going on in households, but generally, I don't think it's intentional. It's in not cases. intentional, but it's it's role playing and how society. I don't know. Maybe it's how our parents did it, uh, and how it can play out I over time. I think it's definitely generational. Like these things start. Because maybe there was, you know, you've grown up in a household and there was one main income earner and then it became your role to be the main mm. income earner. And that responsibility is a heavy heavy burden for those people, Very especially much. when you want to start a family and, yeah, what happens if that income stops coming in. So they've got to keep ploughing on. And I think that's why we have so many mental health issues and mm. why we mm-hmm. need to be careful about this, especially with... Well, in our lives. I, mean, I, I definitely see that in coaching sometimes, you know, where we're, um, say, um, a male partner has been the income earner, this traditional scenario, and um, female partner potentially or their partner stayed home and, and been the caregiver. They, that feeling of needing to be the provider, that's their place, that's their responsibility that's their... It's hard to break free of that. They feel it all and that burden on their shoulders. And their partner's generally trying to protect and that's them not good either. too and provide a safe <laughs> place for them yeah. to actually do that and be the provider as well. So, yeah, it is role-playing. It, it but is. if we can bring mm. some awareness to it and just open up some conversations around mm-hmm. it so it becomes mm-hmm. an even safer space for them because they're vulnerable um, a lot of the time. Mm, very much. Yeah. And they feel stuck. I, I see it a lot. They feel stuck in their job or their relationship, um, you know, with the type of work they want to do. They might even want a career change, you know, you know, but they actually feel they can't because they've got to keep this level of income up to the family. It's their responsibility. 
that's their job. They have to provide for everybody in the family yeah. and it can't be shared. So um, it definitely plays out from all different aspects. But this is where interdependency is super important. So it is, firstly, open communication, sharing, be really mindful and conscious about having equity in your household, about the decisions, you know, the roles, um, and how a- that equity is isn't it? equality, is it? No. It doesn't mean you have to be doing the same things or spending the same amount of money. No. Earning the same amount of money. No, definitely. It's just not. having a seat at the table, an equal seat at the table, really. Yeah. To make decisions. And I think also, um, you know, coming back to the personalities, another way it can play out because more and more people these days, two people in a household have to work just to make ends meet. It's just the way cost of living, housing prices and that have taken us. So to be able to afford those things that people want, it means that two people need to work. Um, so that shifts the problem of saying, oh, well, I might not be earning the money coming into the house or it's my responsibility. But there is still, like you said, some of those traditionalism, you know, maybe and personalities about who's making decisions. Yeah. But, yeah, really be thoughtful and open communication and keep an evil seat know your money both people in a relationship have the responsibility to be able to log on to internet banking as mel says understand where the money flows where it goes having open money communication um, is is key so i've had i was just that's just triggered my memory i've had people tell me who have been very wealthy and had a lot of money and saying (laughs) can you not tell my wife we have that much money i don't want her to know we've got that much money yeah so that he didn't want her to participate in making decisions, basically, with how mm-hmm. it might be spent. Mm. Or he might have thought she's going to spend the money. Yeah, because he had different That's... ideas for the money. Yeah. Yeah. And his values over that. Yeah. yeah, it does happen. I've had, yeah, other people say they can't go out for coffee with me and I know they've got a million dollars because I can't afford it. So mm. that could come down to values or mm. whatever. But yeah. I, I know that there's money control. there was money control in that situation as well. Yeah. So just being... Yeah, I don't know if we've got friends in those situations. Maybe we could help guide them kindly. Yeah, somehow. That's well. right. It's hard. And know. genuinely support. And you know, again, if we're going to change this, we then need we to need to it. talk about it. Um, and it might be uncomfortable, but oh. we we need to talk about it. And yes. I think we see it every day, and we don't even see it as a problem. Yes. we're just unaware that it's going on around us or even yeah. ourselves so i think this is huge going on in today you know today's world um, um but money needs to be spoken about at home and you need to understand it everybody needs to understand how it works and be a part and participate in those decisions and it is about interdependence um you know my own story yeah i didn't understand it at the time but innately i've always worked um and i've had a desire for career and drive and you know doing things um so that's probably been the key reason but the secondary one was that i always felt when my um, kids started school that if i didn't stay in the workforce i was going to be left behind but i also wanted to be that contributor to money to the household no doubt because I grew up, I'm 52, so I grew up, my traditionalism is dad work, mum stayed at home, and I saw what that did, you know, where mum didn't have as much say around the money, and I did not want that. I And the only way I saw that that could happen is that the, I was an equal earner to the household, to not let me give that away. But I don't think, my learning is, I don't think that's the only way. It is about communication and relationship that mm. you have at money in the house yeah mine's quite similar and in fact I had some time off work where I wasn't earning money and I felt like I didn't have an equal seat at the table and yeah so it, it's on us it's our belief system as it's it's not somebody else doing that to us no that's exactly <laughs> right it's it all going on it's our own beliefs exactly right um but yeah. also like how do you get out of a relationship too like yeah um i've always thought about that too like what happens if i don't want to stay in this relationship then how do i go about being on my own i want I, I want to be self-sufficient i don't mm. want to be left in that situation mm. or mm. what happens if something happens to him mm. or regardless you know like mm. i want don't want to be at somebody else's mercy it's that's just not my personality mine neither i think that's key though i want to be seen as an individual 
um, even though I've been married for 30 odd years, it's very, very important to me to be seen as an individual and self-sufficiency for me is part of that. It's, mm. it's not for a fear that we don't stay together. It's, it's just because, you know, I want to be independent. Um, mm. Yeah, it doesn't come from anybody else. It's just, just uh, me. Yeah, mm. so I think um, I just want to round up and just say, like, again, where does it all come from? So it's, they're all learnt behaviours around our beliefs. Mm. And then what are we passing on to our children? Mm-hmm. Again, because they're going to watch us. Uh, they're going to yeah. see how we treat Such each other in our relationships. Um, how are they going to yeah. behave in their later relationships? It doesn't matter if you're working <laughs> or not, but they want to see a strong mum and a strong dad and that how that connection works between the two. You know, yeah. that is so important, yeah. what we model to them. Um, yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're working or not working, so long as yeah. you're not giving yourself away, I think. That's right, because they absolutely will see that and it, it plays out, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I don't think most people want to perpetuate that yeah, for their children. definitely. The, and I did touch on it at the beginning. I just want to finish off in saying, though, we do see the other end of that, so through divorce. And divorce is one of the most common reasons... Um, well common reasons why divorce happens is because of money Um, so first of all if we can have better ones maybe we'll have you know less relationship breakdown but but also you know think about I've talked about this previously but for financial resilience planning I actually think it'd be healthy if couples could do that together and say well what if we weren't together and that's a really hard and confronting thing but what would be my plan? Because if you do that, you're probably more likely, I would say. To and I know it's together. hypothetically speaking, but maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, better communication um, around that and, you know, having skills and, you know, but getting to know your money and your numbers goes a long, long way. And then, yeah, mm. being able to work that out. Mel and Darlene, your relationship counsellors, come here for all your <laughs> professional advice. No, there is a disclaimer at the end. Yes, There's no it's personal general advice. It's just general <laughs> advice only. <laughs> Mm-hmm. and totally our opinions <laughs> that's right exactly um yeah cool mm. yep are you happy with that i am yeah so you but really you know after you've listened to the podcast just put your mind to yeah interdependence versus codependence and yeah whether it's working for you or not and mm. uh, people around you like you said you know let's start having those conversations mm. Mm. cool Mm -hmm. Uh, So the question that we have today um, came from somebody who Mm -hmm. uh, reached out and said they're very worried about not being able to continue to Mm -hmm. afford the things that they have. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was a bit of catastrophizing too around uh, some fixed rates coming off and repayments going up Mm -hmm. a lot and not being able to hold on to... They've got an investment property, so... These people bought a house, um, their first, you know, first home buyers, and then they've um, bought a second home and kept the original one as an investment property. Mm-hmm. So the idea was to hold on to that for a very long time to build mm. equity and help them in later years. Yeah, but they weren't anticipating all these interest rate rises. No. No, no, no. And now they're coming off a fixed rate, is yes, that right? it's coming off a fixed, 2% fixed rate mm. into 6 and a bit percent. And mm. across all their lending, it goes, repayments will increase by $2,500 a month. Um, yeah, but they were kind of thinking in their brain, oh, it's going to, all our, like, our loans are probably going to go up by $6,000 a month. So it's less than, and so they thought, oh, we can't afford that. So they hadn't done their numbers. So knowing the numbers... That's the first thing you've got to do. That's right. <laughs> and also if they sold that investment property after all of the sale costs and etc., they would have only cleared $50,000. So it's not ideal to sell that property. Like Not after you've paid stamp duty and you know things like that. You're actually probably in do a the negative hard position. To try and hold on to that property is the A sell. game. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, it comes back down to them knowing their numbers and what is it going to take. So they do have extra income earning uh, potential. They've got um, side jobs and mm-hmm. commission earning jobs as mm-hmm. well. So there's potential um, to increase income, but also just buffer down and get really um, intimate, I suppose, with knowing what, what their numbers are, what their spending's Maybe like, and what's 
Yeah, decide where they can cut some discretionary. Yeah. Discretionary and then also increase rent as mm. well because that's something mm. that they haven't done mm. or wanted to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, exhaust everything else first um, would be the answer. You know, so look at your numbers, look at your actual spending. Can I reduce my discretionary? Have I got income extra, you know, ability to earn, to cover? Um then you know and then the last thing would be if it got down to that do i need to sell the investment property um actually understand what that's going to do to your cash flow you know how much different you know what what amount are you contributing after rent so yeah and you know because once i i sell it it's gone i'm not getting the rental income anymore um so what is my net benefit and and then and yeah. also think about an ongoing strategy past beyond that as mm. well too. So it comes back down to values, priorities, goals, what you want to do with that money. Well, any big life milestones as well, you know, where you are in your life. Do you see any changes in, you know, are you dropping to one income? Maybe, you know, if you're starting a family or, you know, have you got future pay rises in your in your vision or your future that you think are coming? Because if it's short term, you know, maybe you can write it out, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very right. good well thank you for joining us today we do love talking about money we do and our lives really uh, yeah we it's do really about our lives <laughs> so thanks for <laughs> staying with us right through to the end yeah and we'll catch you next time that's right spread the word listen to the podcast give us a great five-star review please do so more people can access it and listen so yeah, yeah. thank you At The Money Collective, we provide financial wellbeing premium coaching, mortgage broking and workplace financial wellbeing programs, which we couldn't do without the seamless support of our fabulous team. If you'd like to find out more, head to themoneycollective.com.au or our socials to take action and engage our services. In our Facebook group, join the conversation and help us break down the taboo around money. All content in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is general in nature. For tailored personal advice, please seek out a professional.